starts in the same place. Or at least that's the way it should be. Because there's no better place to take a step onto the ice for the first time than here. Where only the sky's above you. Where you can see yourself breathe. Where you come to swear that this game is exactly what winter was made for. So that's what made this such a great idea. An obvious one, really. Taking the greatest players in the world, the ones who had gone from ponds and lakes and rivers to the biggest stages in the sport, and bringing them back outside. Being a kid growing up playing outside, you know, that's where you dreamed to play in the NHL. And I don't want to get off the ice. It certainly brought you brought you back to those times as soon as you step foot uh, outside. Good sticks, boys, good sticks. But all these years later, it's easy to forget how unlikely it sounded then. How many questions there were. Would the ice stand up? Could they sell the tickets? Pittsburgh and Buffalo, that's football country. How much uncertainty? When you take one of our games and then you subject it to the elements, anything can happen. What a big chance it felt like. Building a sheet of ice atop a football field and hoping against hope everything would go just right. If only they'd known what just right would feel like. You couldn't really prepare yourself for what that was going to be like. I would own you on the pond. Parking lots full of people, tailgating, bonfires. It was a hootin' nanny. You could easily could understand why the players on the NFL get so pumped up. Snowy day, celebration of hockey in Buffalo. It was like kind of playing uh, in a snow globe. It was as picturesque as any sporting event I've ever covered. This is the story of how the game that's different from all the others first came to be. Solid 20. Let's win the first 20. Here we go. Come on. Come on. The story of how, in so many ways, everything about that day worked out like it was meant to be. Honestly, you couldn't have asked for anything more. You couldn't script it any better. The game on his stick right here. The story of the first NHL Winter Classic. It's now been 10 years since the National Hockey League's first Winter Classic. 10 years since the New Year's Day game first became one of the biggest draws on the sports calendar. It all started as a business idea, with the league on a mission to find new ways to reach new fans. We were looking for an opportunity to create an event that would be attractive, not just to the fans of the teams participating, but would be something that would capture the imagination of the sporting world. And that was at a point in time when the college football bowls had moved away from January 1st, and we and NBC concluded that that would be a great window for us to do something special. I had seen the outdoor hockey game that the NHL had done several years earlier in Canada. The first ever National Hockey League game outdoors, the Heritage Classic. I just saw it as a really cool thing. I just remember how cold it was. I remember all the smoke coming off people's breaths. It reminded me of the, the ice ball when the Packers played the Cowboys in 67. I thought, what an unbelievable scene. And we thought, if you do this right and market it right, you could really create a, a destination. A lot of people are going to be home. And, you know, in the middle of the afternoon on that New Year's Day, let's give it a shot. For an American audience, it was a novel idea for an NHL game. A lot of people who have played hockey, and especially most of these players, they grew up playing outdoors. So it connected to the game's roots. So as the plans for the first Winter Classic got underway, the first order of business was to find the right teams to participate. And soon, an intriguing idea emerged. The concept was, how about a good cold weather city with a reputation for cold? Buffalo. I mean, the Buffalo Sabres were a 
perfect example of a you know great fan base and they like the little mucking and grinding they had a great goalie in ryan miller ryan miller spectacular goal i thought it was uh, interesting that you know we're the first real like hyped up sanctioned game seen as i played uh, outdoors in michigan state and what was you know the biggest game uh, outdoors for a long time the college experience was definitely uh, something where you, you know you take some lessons from that and, and move forward family and friends were all calling texting uh, wanted to, to make sure they they, they got tickets so I, I knew it was going to be a pretty fun event to be a part of and so there it was ralph wilson stadium and buffalo and one of the more prominent teams because of star power at the time was pittsburgh Pittsburgh was geographically proximate. Having a team like the Penguins that had star power and Sidney Crosby and the rest of their roster, it made perfect sense. I mean, the game was a marquee event because of Sidney Crosby. Crosby shot score! Yeah, and Sidney likes that goal. We waited a long time for someone like this. We had Gordy Howe and Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky. Now we have Sidney Crosby. Hockey fans knew how great he was because he was the youngest scoring champion in North American pro sports history at 19. Now he was 20 on New Year's Day. Sydney was his first year as a captain. He was the youngest captain in the NHL history. You could tell about, uh, about the way that he approached the game, that he was ready for that challenge. It was a great drawing card for the network to have the Pittsburgh Penguins there and to have a lot of people on New Year's Day, see one of the great hockey players in his budding years. With the venue set and the teams in place, another question loomed as the calendar moved towards New Year's Day 2008. Come on, big guy. Could they sell the tickets? This was not a layup like future Winter Classics would be. Do you think people would turn out on New Year's Day? Did they already have plans on New Year's Day? Could we sell 70,000 plus tickets to a game? And we learned the answer to that in 18 minutes when, when it sold out. We were very comfortable that everything came together well, but the biggest challenge we had was making sure that the game would be played under competitive conditions. As New Year's Day 2008 approached, final preparations for the NHL's inaugural Winter Classic were well underway. With Ralph Wilson Stadium in Buffalo sold out and a national television window for the NHL's most exciting young superstar, Sidney Crosby. However, another big question remained. Could the NHL create an outdoor rink that was safe and up to standard for a game that counted? This game is two points on the table. It, this isn't a game of shinny here. As close to the pristine ice that we would have in any other building, that's what I want for that day. The biggest obstacle for us is obviously Mother Nature. That's something that we can't control. So when you're in an indoor arena, you have a controlled environment. You're able to say exactly what the temperature is going to be, almost exactly what the humidity is going to be inside. No sun, no rain, no snow. But once you move outside, you're kind of at the mercy of all of that. A group of kids playing on a frozen pond never worried about ice conditions. But in the pros, every inch of the surface matters. The few previous outdoor games played in the U.S. and Canada before had gone off well. But this one was going to have its own challenges. Played in the brutal Buffalo winter, and just a few days after the Bills' last home game of the season. Everything had its timetable of exactly when we were supposed to be moving in exactly where all the equipment was in relationship to the Bills game being over. But at halftime, the weather totally changed on us, and it really messed up our first setup day. And from there, with the weather not letting up, the ice staff was going to have trouble getting back on schedule. We had some flex time built into our first three days of scheduling, and uh, unfortunately we used that all up on the first day, so we've had to push our crews pretty hard here the last 48 hours. Every crew does tall ballers. We work midnight to noon, noon to midnight. When 
once we get on site, we'll start laying out our, our pipe run from the trucks to the field. And then once we get all that laid out, we'll start laying down the floor panels. We fill all of our pipes with a light bulb. Once we get everything circulating there, our dashboards go up, and that's really kind of when it starts to look like a rink. And then we have our refrigeration truck that's bringing all of our temperatures down. Usually by that time, we're able to kind of start making ice and building the rink from there. The surface right now is at 20 degrees. We'll drop it another two degrees here. The rain didn't have anything to do with us today. As a matter of fact, we call it God helping us make ice today because as quick as it was falling, we were freezing it. The ice is ready to go. We're ready to skate. Drop the puck, let's go. It's on. And so the day before the Sabres and the Penguins faced off, the ice got its most important test. Both teams taking the ice for practice. Here we go, boys. Here we go now. Okay, we had some problems with it. Hey, Jerry, look at this. Oh my God, this hole. Well, how was it? What do you think? Yeah, it was pretty good. I think it probably right at the end. Um, started to get a little bit chunky, but I think that's fine with the weather. And they still have some time here to adjust if they need to. So I can't imagine what it takes to put all that together. But they done a great job. The ice felt good. It looked good. And. Uh, Today was a lot of fun. Practice was a lot more playful than it's been. <laughs> Look at you, ninja. Yeah. Funny. Hey, how many times? How many times does Bugsy play hockey outside? He played deck hockey inside in Pittsburgh all the time. He never played it once on a lake. I would own you on the pond. They're trying to get throwback hockey going. That's how it is when you're a kid. You're screwing around. You're cranking on guys. Oh my God, that's always open. And you're goofing off. Maybe if I'm in front of a head like this, no one will see me. And uh, it felt a lot more like that. I don't want to get off the ice. You really felt like you could stay out there a couple hours. One of those ones where you just did a scrimmage all day long. But uh, you could see it in the players' faces. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. You guys even look cheerful out there. So. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow we'll have, you know, roughly 80,000 people here and a lot of people watching on TV. There's a puck on the ice and you get to play. Welcome back to Orchard Park, New York, here at Ralph Wilson Stadium. Over 73,000 people expected to be in the stands today to watch the Winter Classic between the Sabres and the Pittsburgh Penguins. The weather wasn't that great leaving the hotel. It looked like rain, and that's when we're kind of thinking, this might not work. You know, rain on ice, that's no good. And then as we got closer and closer, that rain turned into what I thought was pretty good snow. The snow now coming down even harder here in Orchard Park, and we'll have to see if that's at all an issue today. It's actually starting to collect a little, and then you're there, and there's loads of people already there, and we're there hours and hours before a broadcast, and I'm thinking to myself, this is really, really neat. The scene in Buffalo was just wild. <laughs> These are hardy fans. They don't care. They come out for Bill's games when they're 2-12 and 12 and it's 10 degrees, so they show up in droves for the game. This is Hockey Town, baby! There was people there in the parking lots having fun and barbecuing and, and doing their thing, playing hockey, not playing football at that time. They're playing hockey out there. It's one of the best football tailgating scenes in America, and it looked the same way. Players told me later that on the team bus, they were like, what is this? This looks like a football game, and it did. I remember driving into the stadium a few hours before the game, and as we're pulling in, the, the parking lot's full of people tailgating, bonfires. The fact they could come and tailgate and spend the whole day celebrating hockey the way they can do it with football, I think it was really something that was special to them and obviously special to us as well. Go home, Penguins! They're going home a loser! Woo! People just love the idea of playing hockey outside. It feels right. But it was a little bit different, you know, playing at a football stadium with that, you know, that amount of, of people watching. Snowy day, celebration of hockey in Buffalo. Let's go, Sabres! 73,000 here. Come on, guys, let's go. As the puck drop drew near, the fans had filled the stadium, and the players got ready to take the outdoor ice. 
We really didn't know what to expect coming out there and being the road team. We expect it to be a, a little tougher on you, but with everything kind of leading up to it, there was a lot of excitement around the game. Ladies and gentlemen, please Officially, in the record books, it was just another regular season contest. But there was no denying that the Winter Classic had the feel of a real event, the likes of which the sports world had never quite seen. You could feel the excitement as the players came out of the locker room and up the tunnel and toward the ice. You could feel that this wasn't just another game. The people in the stadium were just as excited to witness a game of this proportion as we were playing coaching a game like that. Could this be more perfect? It's almost as if Mother Nature was cued and took her cue on time. It's a perfect setting for an outdoor game, and I think we're in for a great afternoon. And the truth was, the incredible story of that New Year's Day is just beginning. The Penguins and the Sabres in the NHL's Winter Classic in Buffalo. The elements, obviously, are a huge part of the story. NBC had the great foresight to have a meteorologist there that day. Mother Nature is out in all her winter glory. The snow has been picking up over the last half hour. A beautiful lake effect snow band right over the top of the stadium. We expect that around for at least the first period. And I can only imagine that people began calling one another who might have been watching Michigan, Florida and said, you gotta watch this hockey game because the snow's there, but I don't know how they're gonna handle it. The snow continued to fall as the puck drop of the inaugural Winter Classic approached. And if the scene was enough to give you chills, the 30 degree temperatures were chilling the players who had the sense the elements would play a role all afternoon. Everything forward, let's just go, let's skate. We could tell right from warm up the puck didn't slide like usually. Keep it simple. Don't try high risk play, percentage play all the time. Keep it really simple. Before the game, we talked about ice and things like that, weather, probably keeping it pretty simple. You just want to be aggressive when the puck's bounce and stuff like that. You just try to try to be aggressive and, and make plays. All right, boys, you have fun. Here we go. And this groundbreaking or ice breaking game is underway. It looked like a hockey snowboard, and both teams had to embrace the impact the weather was going to have. Well, you can see how much snow's on the ice, and it's, it's amazing how much snow's on the ice already, right? There was quite a bit of snow on the ice. And I don't remember it looking this sloppy, actually, in real time. I kind of remember it being a little more fluid. I guess it kind of played in to help us. Sure enough, the pens ended up benefiting from the conditions before even the first shift was over. Usually the puck would come to you a little bit more in the neutral zone there and instead it kind of stops up. So definitely a challenge, but uh, it's kind of a wake up call for for us that day. And then Sidney Crosby for the quick lift of the stick of Tim Conley goes wide, takes the puck hard to the net, and then Colby Armstrong beats Ryan Willard. With the amount of snow on the ice, it was definitely choppy and bouncing around. And it took a while for everyone to, I think, kind of settle into the fact that it was going to be like that. So uh, maybe we, we took advantage early and. A guy like Crosby can create something like that on ice with two inches of snow. It's still like the fastest goal. I watch every outdoor game now, and I watch the first 20-some seconds, and I go, okay, still got it. <laughs> From there, the snow just kept falling, which meant both teams had to adjust to playing against not just one another, but Mother Nature, too. Ludman has shot the Again, it got caught up in the snow piles that are building up on the ice. It looked awesome for TV, and as far as like playing and making plays and getting things accomplished as much as we would like to, it was a little bit harder. When you're making those passes, you're trying to stick handle, puck will bounce off your stick, maybe a pass will go awry. So again, you got to make sure concentration is so important. Hey, we don't even got to worry about passes, just get it going forward. They can't handle it. They're not going to be able to beat you. Just a bouncing puck's harder. 
playing outside, they do a great job of trying to make the best ice possible, but it's still outside. There's weather and things that can affect it, so you just go out there with an open mind and just try to be aggressive. While Crosby preached aggressiveness, as the period continued, he showed off some sensational stick in them, too. Oh, you see that? That's fine. What a play. Maybe the most magical play of that winter class. Well, here's that play, Pinger. He got so excited about it. He was <laughs> handling it not once but twice. The ability to read that, I can get from here to there faster if I flip the puck up in the air and push along my stick a little bit, and then I can skate into it. That was magnificent. It was one of my favorite moments of that winter class. For Cesar who made Sidney Crosby the things he tried, not only in practice, but more importantly, in a game situation. Uh, that's pretty amazing to be to capable to do those type of things at the high pace. You know, you see guys doing those things usually during practice. When they get, when they go to the game, they don't take the chance. Sidney with his ability and confidence, he's capable to do that. With the puck bounce as much as it was, you know, to try to handle it, the same thing probably would end up happening. You know, you would have been juggling anyway. So I think a time like that where the puck's kind of lively, it just worked out that I was able to do it. You never know when you're going to use those skills, but it's fun to be able to make plays like that. And as the conditions forced the players to improvise, they made the coaches think about new kinds of strategy. We have penalty coming up to Kalina to Buffalo. We were getting a penalty, and the referee skated over. He said, do you want them to clean the ice now or after, after the power play? I said, clean it after the power play, the Penguin power play. And I thought, uh, with more ice, more snow on the ice, wouldn't allow them to make as many plays. And as soon as the power play was over, they cleaned the ice. <laughs> You just asked for the ice to maybe be squeegeed a little bit? Yeah, well, you look at the puck movement, the puck's not going anywhere. And I think that we had a pretty heavy snowfall to start the game. And I think now, if you if you did, I think we'd get through it OK. I mean, it's not up now, right? So we can get through this section. Yeah. So the uh, Zambonis are coming out there. Yeah. You get what you wish for. The Zambonis have come out for a dry straight halfway through the first period. The players look like they're making the best of this. As a kid, you know, you're always stopping the game to shovel off the rink to clear it off to make it good so the puck will slide and you're able to skate on it too. So, you know, those stoppage of play to do that type of thing were just all part of it. When you're outside in Wisconsin or somewhere in Boston or Minnesota and you're playing outdoor hockey and no one's shoveled, this is what it's like and it's not easy. And these are the best in the world. So the weather was testing everyone on the ice, and that included those trying to keep it playable. There were some soft places near both of the team benches. Dan Craig's working on some kind of filler right there is what it is. And uh, there's a big chunk. It's been there since the warm-up, and they've been monitoring it. And I recall that Darren Pangs actually picked up a big glob of it just to show some of the challenges there were going to be to keep the rink going during the course of the day. Hey, guys, I, Edzo, I can almost hit you with this snowball right here. We were just trying to show the people, like, this isn't easy for the players to get through it. We knew that conditions weren't going to be great, but let's make it fun. They patched as many spots and cleared as much snow as they could. And the first period ended without any more scoring. seconds in, Colby Armstrong from Sidney Crosby. Certainly not an uneventful first period, and certainly not the typical NHL game because of the circumstances here. Anytime you can pick a team that has Crosby on it, you're going to expect a player of that caliber to create a couple chances on his own, and you know, he created the early one, but you know, I thought we came up with a bigger push after we got through the first period. John Shannon was a producer that I had worked with a number of years, and he had suggested before I go to Buffalo, get plexiglass to put down over my notes. And what I didn't think about was that the rain would get underneath the plexiglass and cause the notes to totally be destroyed anyway. We did have uh, plexiglass to cover these up. But, there you go, here. Uh, this is what we're talking about. I still have it but I can't read it because all of the color ran due to the water. We gotta get skating and we gotta keep driving the net. Keep driving the net on this guy. If we don't have anything, get it below the goal line, get it behind the net. We've had a couple good opportunities. We gotta go out and win a period to win a game. Let's go win this period. Come on, boys. The first period of the Winter Classic wasn't what the Sabres had in mind. Now the objective was to change the momentum in period two. 
Welcome back to Hockey Night in Canada from Ralph Wilson Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. One to nothing, Pittsburgh leads as we get set to start the second period of the Winter Classic. The setting was as arresting as it had been all day, but the home team and the home crowd were honing their focus on the hockey game they come to win. When you get scored upon 20 seconds into a game, you're, you're on your heels a little bit. So now you start the second period and you've got a little bit of gusto behind you. And, and you know that it's in your building and you know that you're trying, let's go here already. I think we were out there in the first period enjoying the moment and uh, maybe just looking around a little bit. And I think second period we started to engage and get involved in the game. Finally a blast right on and caught with the save. You know, they, they simply started skating a little more. They played their own game. It came back around now for Daniel Pye. Threw on in front of the great fly. In front by Conklin and another stop. I think you look at it now, there's, you know, if it's the first minute in the period, the ice is pretty good. So I think those are the times you want to try to capitalize. And they did when Pittsburgh made a mistake. Buffalo has a good start to the second period. Drops to Conway again, looks over the traffic. Fed one across, a shot by Kennedy Connolly, a great player, great at uh, Delane, made a nice pass. In Winter Classic games, I think you just want to be sure on a lot of plays, and, and that's a play where, you know, maybe in a game you get it and you, you, you try to shoot a lot quicker, but there I may, had to make sure that it's on my stick and, and that I'm able to get a good shot off. Well, the Penguins were not able to get the puck in deep. There you see in the background, the Penguins are going for a change. They only have four players on the ice in the defensive zone. Yeah, that was me. That was my line change. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I'm going to actually talk to Kobe about this because, yeah, I was the minus there, and you never change on, you know, especially on the way back. That's a minus for him, and uh, I'm warm and cozy on the bench. The Sabres had scored plenty of big goals all season long, but this one had awakened some 70,000 in the stadium. in the press box, behind the windows of the fans cheering, 70,000 people cheering for a goal, and you thought it was like an airplane landing, and here we are behind glass. People are further out, um, so we score the goal, everyone's kind of jumping on the bench, and then the sound kind of hits you from the fans. It seemed like a delayed, echoed, Mm, 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 and you're like, whoa, and then when it comes down and hits you, it's like, whoa, you know, it was really neat, really neat. So, the game was tied at one, and the stadium stayed in a frenzy as the Sabres maintained control throughout the second period, out shooting the Pens 14 to two. And when the teams went back into the locker room for the intermission, this time it was the visitors trying to gather themselves. Keep shooting, boys. That net, the rebounds are there. Jeff returned to the ice for the third period of this Winter Classic from Orchard Park, New York, near Buffalo. A 1-1 tie in a game that means so much. With the snow continuing to fall, every chance felt all that bigger from both sides as the third period began. Right back comes Kennedy, shooting one, blocked up by Miller, rebound, and he's got that one too. We knew we needed a better third period, and... Um, yeah, which is a good example about for us, you know, make sure that uh, we uh, use a number of one thing or number one asset was our speed. And you could see here Tyler Candy bring the puck wide and going hard in the net and get his own rebound. One of my, the big things with me is my skating is a difference. So I try to obviously use it here. And, you know, I, I, I used to always have a pretty good snapper coming down the wing and I try to use it to my advantage. And as the Pens look to regain momentum, Sidney Crosby continued to display his array of talents. There's not too many players can able to do uh, those Dennis Savard type of moves. So uh, with the skills capable to put it under the crossbar, and I guess with the snow, he was not capable to, to do that. It's like pushing a five-pound weight. And the horn's going to sound, and that'll end the first half. With the wind and snow a factor, the teams changed goals halfway through the third. But from there, the impact of the elements only seemed to intensify. And it just feels like a five-pound dumbbell when I'm carrying the puck. Well, here we go again. Just as the game started, another little squall rolls in off the lake. And you notice how it's going a little sideways. The wind has picked up. As the players struggled to deal with the downfall, 
So did the ice. I've been watching this spot right next to the Sabre bench. They manicure it almost every time there's a whistle. Um, they're just having problems with a patch, I would say, about two foot by one foot uh, inside the blue line. There were some spots, I know some troubled spots, I think, down just past Buffalo's bench. A uh, spot that they had to work on a few times throughout the game. They had, like, an uh, extinguisher out, and they were trying to do everything they could to, to keep the ice in that area. Well, I remember Dan Craig. And this, I'm sure, Dan would tell you, was unlike any challenge he had ever seen. Uh, it was tricky. It was re it was really tricky. I really had to manipulate just using the ice resurfacer itself or guys with the shovels and doing whatever I could. We have the problem here, guys, with the ice once again. This has been the same area that's been a problem all game long. I remember players helping with their sticks to sort of patch up holes in the ice. And it definitely approximated more than any game probably in the history of the NHL conditions that these guys, including Sid, grew up in playing. And just like back in their pond days, they played through it, trading more chances as the period wound down. Hawkins climbing behind. Heads on the front row. Be a quick shot to win the goal. Roy getting it over the line. His shot caught with the save the rebound. Van Vanek just failed to catch that one. As the buzzer neared, though, neither side could pull ahead. But then, just before the end of regulation, came another plot twist. A whistle on the Pens number 20. There's going to be a penalty on the play. A hooking call as time runs up in the third period. You guys put the whistle away for half the game, and you're going to call that going to overtime? Colby Armstrong's going to get it for hooking. What a game I had. I scored the first goal, then I was the reason that they scored. And then I took a penalty and heading into overtime. Yeah, this is a great game. <laughs> it worked out well. So here we go. Overtime at Ralph Wilson. At the inaugural Winter Classic, overtime starting with a power play for the Buffalo Sabres, thanks to a hooking penalty on Colby Armstrong. Come on, boys. we got to kill this. Come on. I just remember it was a bad time to take a penalty, and uh, I think we had to kill the whole thing uh, in the overtime period, so I was worrying if they were going to score. Smacho gets it down low. It's up, it's up to me for one time over to you. Let's just get it in and work. So as the snow billowed down even harder on the outdoor rink in Buffalo, the Sabres returned to the ice with a four-on-three man advantage, immediately attacking Ty Conklin in the net, but unable to put home a game winner. Conklin shoots and Conklin made the save. Back to Pavlenko with a shot. Conklin makes the save and hangs on to it. What a surreal that meant the first ever Winter Classic looked like it was heading to a shootout. And on this snowy day, we raised the prospect of a shootout in a blinding snowstorm, which it would be fitting that we see everything in the NHL on a day when we've seen everything from Western New York. You're sitting back thinking this is the perfect scenario. This is this is what you want to sell the game on. This is what people want to see. This crowd doesn't want to leave, so no, they, they want to give them something to watch. And to think that there was some suggestion at one point that they might have difficulty selling this game out. <laughs> this was perfect because it took the game even deeper and even longer. It gave the people that were there a lot more to cheer about and a lot more to watch and see and be a part of. I think we're going to have to shoot out all in one end zone. Yes, here. exactly right. And, and what's going to happen is Ryan Miller's just going to stay on this side and he'll go into the net next. The number one reason, you don't, you don't want to give advantage to one team. And... Um, was more like a gentleman agreement or goalies when on the same side. I remember it being a fair decision by the, the officiating and, and the coaching staff. So they're trying to factor in the wind and lighting and all that stuff. The coaches then had a decision to make. Which three players to line up for the shootout? Coaches spend a lot of time with players in practices and, and you know, your assistant coaches are watching that all the time and saying, hey, this guy's hot, you know, this guy's not. But generally, you go to the pretty same guys. In a game like this, I'm sure that both coaches, Michelle Terrian and Lindy Ruff, are wanting to get the big boys out there as much as possible. I mean, we had a pretty good shootout team. And, you know, Al's called a league starting out here. He's a dangerous shooter. Alesh was one of our best shootout guys. He had, he had a tremendous move to his backhand, and he had one of the quickest releases, and he was one of the guys they used almost always when it came to going in any shootout. In a 1-1 tie, the game's to a shootout is Cody against Ty Coughlin with 72,000 fans standing and looking on.
biggest thing I always remember in that shootout was just before Alesh Kotali goes to make his attempt on goal, the noise, the entire crowd, all three sections of the stadium on their feet, just screaming at the start of that shootout. That, to me, is almost one of the biggest moments of the entire game. Listen to this. This is unbelievable. The passion of these fans, unmeasured. See, as, as he picks up the puck, he has that little fumble right there. So that, the, the snow was putting a little bit of drag on it, so I thought he made a good call and made the shot instead of trying to move the puck around too much. That's a perfect shot. There is no room there. Great it's shot by Kotalik. So stay in the same net. Ryan Miller wants to use this in, and he will. And he'll face Eric Christensen, who's been superb in shootouts and he tried I think actually the weather helped me on that one because <laughs> uh, you know he's trying to make his cutback move and he's unable to get a handle on it. Well, Christensen going through the snow tries the quick pullback, but if you can see his visor, man, he's got snow all over it. A difficult task to see through. The shooters are going right into the snow. They only cleared around the top of the circle and in. So uh, you can see as he's just kind of pushing the puck so he gets to the break point of the snow and then he starts to try and do something but you know there's still that accumulation coming up. This is just like showdown. <laughs> break away, change goalies, change shooter. Tim Connolly, 0 for 1 this year. It's saved by Colton. Tim Connolly, one of our best shooters and one of our best deekers and probably a lot of times you're going to see him deek but because of you know the snow coming down and the amount of snow on the ice, I think that you know he chose to shoot. Things can be even now if Latang, who has been the closer three times, three winners, and he's three for three. Another youngster, he's 20 years old, you know, and uh, Latang at that time he was really successful in the shootout, even for the four defensemen. Not many defensemen do this, but he's been terrific. kind of got fooled a little bit by it. It almost looked like a mishandle coming in. You know, you can see all the snow, you know, going back and forth. It's almost lose sight of the puck at one time. Everyone standing. A bit again. I'm over one, five for 12 in his career on Conklin. Save! Maximoff in again off missed the last shot for the Sabres. And here comes Crosby, and you heard the noise in the stadium when Crosby headed to center ice to get the puck. Yeah, For the storyline, it was a dream scenario. Sidney Crosby with a chance to win the shootout in the Winter Classic. All ingredients are there, and the snowflakes are coming, and the TV's happy, and everybody is excited, and it boils down to, to one shot. I just wanted to make sure I got some kind of shot off. That was really the only thing on my mind, and um, I didn't really have anything in mind as far as what I was going to do, but I just wanted to make sure that I got a shot off and gave myself a chance that way. Meanwhile, the significance of the moment certainly wasn't lost on Doc Emmerich. One other time in a game between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, uh, Sid had had a breakaway, and it just was one of those things that came to me while he was in on the breakaway that the game on his stick. And here's Crosby on a breakaway. The game on his stand. Score! And with this event, now with him having the chance to end the game, it came to me once again. The game on his stick right here. You can tell by how slow I go and kind of by the snow falling over the puck that uh, it wasn't very easy, but, you know, I was just trying to be patient and found a way to, to put one in. I was trying to factor in there's a lot of snow out here, thinking he might just shoot, and Sid has a good shot. He can pick kind of anywhere he wants to go, but, you know, he, he made a conservative play, and I was a little bit trying to be patient and just uh, was a little bit late on the play. 
Oh, I was just excited to have this opportunity to score the winning goal. I and mean, you can see <laughs> by my reaction, I'm pretty happy. So, you know, you can say that it's just a normal two points in you know, regular season schedule, but with everything kind of leading up to it, with it being the first game outside, you know, there was uh, a lot of excitement around the game. And for it to finish this way was, was really cool. With the snow, it was like a, a Cinderella story. You know, it's like you, you can't ask for a better scenario. A better scenario to finish that game. Here's Ryan Miller. Stay Crosby. That's it. That's it, Craig. We're going to go real quick. Hot chocolate's all around. Are you getting hot chocolate? Yeah, I'm going to grab me one. Hey, when you were out there and you came in by yourself, was it just crazy? Buddy, it was all boot. Like it was all booze to start, and then when we scored, there was nothing. Like, silence. If I were an NBC scriptwriter, that would have been the ending. It would have been, all right, Sid has to score to win the game. It was perfect. I think that everything kind of worked in our favor that day between the weather, the great crowd, the competitive game, having this young superstar really get to show his stuff at crunch time. It was the perfect experience for us. Sydney, like, for a showcase game for the you know, international audience, could have been scripted better. You got the snow, you got the shootout, and the NHL's young star scores the decisive goal. You know, it's nice ending, obviously for me but uh and our team but um everything worked out and i think you're right i think it went pretty well i believe that was the first time for sitting in nhl on the center stage to be able to make that big play he has had so many moments beginning with the winter classic that resonate he would be a hall of famer no matter what but there's a difference between being a hall of famer and being a legend this was the beginning of Sidney crosby becoming a legend on New Year's Day, 2008, Sidney Crosby was just 20 years old, two years into his pro career. But his winning goal in the Winter Classic was another huge sign that he was already becoming the face of the NHL, somehow exceeding enormous expectations. I've never seen an athlete come into a league with more heaped on his shoulders than Sidney Crosby. I mean, he was expected to save the league, transform the league. He was the greatest prospect since Wayne Gretzky. He was supposed to be great from day one. Not good, not just okay. Great from day one. And he was. He scores! Oh, slap me, silly, silly. Sidney Crosby, let it be said, one hundred. Over the 10 years since the 08 Winter Classic, Crosby's led the Penguins to four Stanley Cup finals, raising the cup three of those times. Over those same 10 years, what Crosby and the Penguins and Sabres started has only grown. And playing outdoors in the national spotlight has become an experience no one who's a part of it takes for granted. It's a great memory, you know, when I think of things I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, that one's right up there just because it was the first one. Uh, you couldn't really prepare yourself for what that was going to be like. You only had your experience of playing outside as a kid. and. Uh, to be able to do that at the NHL level, I think was a dream come true. Having a chance to play in it was awesome. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun event to be part of it. It's a fun event to watch. Even I now still look forward to watching every year's Winter Classic and the stage keeps getting bigger and bigger. The NHL took advantage of it by putting it in, in really compelling venues. It's such a visual event. When people are clicking through the stations, they want to stop and, and see it and say, wow. The next year it's at Wrigley. Then it's at Fenway. Then you're in, in Philly and Pittsburgh. One of the great winter classics was, you know, in Ann Arbor in front of 100,000 people.
And the outdoor games on New Year's Day have turned out to be just part of the growth of the tradition. There have been more than 20 NHL outdoor games overall since that first Winter Classic on both coasts, including matchups in warm weather climates. Yet another experiment that the NHL ice makers managed to turn into a tremendous successes. And later this month, a different rivalry will take to the elements when the United States and Canada face off in the World Junior Championships at New Era Field back in Buffalo. None of it, though, would have happened without that first Winter Classic in 2008 on New Year's Day, a holiday that hockey took for itself. This was the NHL owning New Year's Day, which had been reserved always for college football in the past. It's the event that's quickly become a New Year's must-see, the NHL Winter Classic. Even the casual fan, they know that New Year's Day, when they turn the TV on, there's going to be an outdoor game. Hockey deserves it. We finally kind of got that model where it's like, well, there's not many of these. It's special. You can celebrate the game the entire day. You never know what you're going to get. Just the, the question mark around the whole event, if it's going to hold up, how's the weather going to be, to what's the stadium going to look like filled up, and you get to watch two teams going at it in a, in a totally different venue. I don't know. Count me in to watch every time. We hear from our fans and our teams that they can't get enough of these games. And everybody who experiences it, whether in the stands or on the ice, finds it so, so memorable. The guys who've been a part of them uh, feel fortunate they've been able to do it. I think the fans that, that go there uh, love the experience and you know, people just love the, the idea of playing hockey outside. It feels, it feels right. With all the history that's transpired since, it's easy to forget that it didn't have to work out so perfectly that first year. From the snow falling, to the setting that felt so singular, to the ending that felt like it was dreamed up. With the kid who had the game on the stick. If all that didn't happen, that might have been the only Winter Classic we ever saw. Maybe it's simple. Maybe some things in sports really are meant to be.